Today we are setting up Nextcloud. So Nextcloud is a great free alternative to using something like Google Drive, uh, Microsoft OneDrive, iCloud Plus, those kind of things. This is a free open source alternative. Now we are going to be hosting this for free as well. So over on Oracle Cloud, they have a free tier, oracle.com slash cloud slash free. You can get up to 200 gigabytes to host your applications. So um, this is a great way of making use of that 200 gigabyte allowance. So I'm gonna be setting up Nextcloud on here. So I've got my Nextcloud running. I've got my test domain here, ideaspotxyz, and I'm running Nextcloud on a subdomain. So cloud, ideaspotxyz is where my Nextcloud is running. So this allows me to actually run a website on the main root domain here. So on ideaspotxyz, I've got WordPress running here. So running two applications on the one server on my Oracle Cloud. I'll show you exactly how I did this. And I'm actually managing all this through Hestia Control Panel. So I've got Hestia Control Panel running on here as well. So all these three things, Hestia, uh, WordPress, and uh, Nextcloud, I've got them all set up here. You'll learn exactly how I did all of this during the tutorial. And again, all the commands that I use to set this up are over my blog, ideas.com.au. So check the description for that link. You can just copy and paste everything I do during the tutorial into your own system and get it all running exactly as I have here. So if all this sounds interesting, then keep watching. All right, I'm in my Oracle Cloud dashboard. I'm on the Get Started tab here. I am using a free tier account. I've got this purple header at the top here. Make sure you've got that. Um, this makes sure that everything you do on your Oracle Cloud account is gonna be free. You will never get charged unless you intentionally upgrade to a paid account. So there's no way you can accidentally choose an option that's gonna cause you to lose money. So this is always gonna be free. As long as you've got this up the top, you're all sweet. So from here, what we do under Get Started, we scroll down to create a V instance. Let's give our instance a name. I'm going to call it Nextcloud for today. And we're going to choose our image and shape. So we click edit there. And our image, we're going to change that. And we go with Canonical Ubuntu 2004 there. Select the image. And our shape, this will actually work fine, the standard AMD. You can actually click change shape. There is a more powerful option, Ampere. Uh, and we click the standard A1 Flex. So we get one Oracle CPU with six gigabytes of memory. You can actually increase that. You can have up to four and 24 gigabytes of RAM, but uh, this will actually run just fine with one and six. So I'm just gonna use this for this demonstration, select this shape. Next card is actually not that performance um, uh, intensive in terms of how much resources it needs. So it'll actually run fine on that AMD if you're not able to access one of these Ampere, because sometimes these are out of um, capacity. So you can use the AMD if, if this one's not available. So these look fine. Um, we want to create an SSH key. So my preferred way of dealing with SSH is using PuTTY. So PuTTY.org, you can get the free copy of PuTTY from there. And we use something called PuTTY Gen that comes with PuTTY to create a SSH key. All we do is load up PuTTY Gen, generate, and wiggle the mouse in there to generate our key. We've got our key there. We can go ahead and save that in. All right, so we can save our public key. I'll call that ideas.pub and our private key. Um, you can add a password. If you're on a shared computer, you should probably add a password, but if you've got a private computer, um, just save it on there. So I've got my pri private key and my public key saved now. All right, now our actual public key is here. We can actually copy this and paste it into Oracle there. So I'm gonna copy that. Uh, make sure you've got it all highlighted properly there. Go back here and we paste our public key. Choose that one there and just paste that in. There we go. Um, the only other thing we might wanna do is customize the boot size by default you get 46.6 gigabytes on your drive there. So we can increase that because actually we get 200 gigabytes to use on our on our free tier account. So we can increase that. I might just bump it up to 80 for this example, but as long as you're under 200 there, you'll be all good. So that looks all good. Uh, we can go ahead and create. So while this is creating, you'll get a yellow icon here. It'll say it's provisioning. So come back in about five minutes and this should be good to go. We do have our public IP address. This should pop up about uh, 30 seconds or so into the process. So we can actually copy that. While we're waiting for this to provision, we might actually set up our DNS. So I am using a domain called Ideaspot XYZ. I put that over on Namecheap for this example. You're just gonna need to use your um, domain provider's DNS manager. So in Namecheap, you'll find that under your domain and advanced DNS. Um, but other DMS providers are pretty similar and we're going to add some new records here. So I'm going to add an A record. I'm going to point the root and I'm going to point that over to our IP address. That's our IP address that we got. 
from Oracle Cloud there. So we tick that one on there. I'm gonna make a few other records as well for this because we're gonna need one for our control panel. I'm gonna use Hestia control panel to set this up. So I'm gonna call the HCP Hestia control panel. Point that to the IP address as well. And because we're gonna be setting up Nextcloud today, I'm gonna to call mine Cloud. Um, you can call that whatever you like, but Cloud I think sounds nice for Nextcloud. Again, point that to our IP address. So these are our A records. You can name those as you please, but I'd, I'd use these for my example. And one more that we need is our C name record for www. I'm gonna point that to my domain here, ideaspot xyz in this case. So your domain goes there. And these are the only records we're gonna need for this tutorial. Now, just uh, for those of you using Cloudflare, it's gonna be a little bit different to get your um, DNS and your SSL set up. I have made a tutorial where I use Hestia and Cloudflare before. I'll put that in the description so you can um, make sure you get your DNS and your SSL set up properly. But for most of us, just using that through Namecheap or GoDaddy or Google Domains, it's gonna be something like this. All right, back on our Oracle Cloud dashboard, we have got green there. So our instance is running. We can actually go ahead and connect to our IP address using the username Ubuntu here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use Putty to do that. So uh, Putty, let's load that up. And I'm gonna connect to that IP address and we're gonna be using Ubuntu there at the IP address on port 22. I'm gonna save this as um, Nextcloud uh, demo. That looks good. And we save that in. The other thing I wanna do here is point over to our SSH key. So we go down to connection and under SSH there, we expand that and we wanna call uh, auth. And then we find our private key that we saved earlier from Putty. So we just browse and get that key that we saved earlier. So our private key there back to our session and we're gonna save that again. So that looks all good. So from here, we should be fine. We can click open here. We can actually open this instance. We click yes there and we should be able to log in to our instance. Awesome. All right, so this is our connection to our server. We're gonna to need to run a few commands here. Over on my blog, you'll actually find the commands. So I'll link to that in the description, but um, you'll find uh, all the commands here on my blog. So I'm gonna change to super user here. And that's our first command. So uh, let's do that. You can actually copy um, and right click to paste into this window. Um, so sudo su dash changes to the hash mark there. We're running as root now. The next one, we download our installer script. So that's a wget and we download our install script. So right click to paste into that window there and enter and that downloads our script. And now we actually run our script. We're gonna have to customize the script a little bit to get this to work how we want. So um, let me zoom in here a bit so I can show you what I mean. Okay, so the first thing in this line we need to change is the email. I've got adminexample.com here. We can change that to ideaspot uh, class at gmail.com for this example. But, but you put your own email in there. Um, the password, I've got example demo password there. We'll change that to a nice strong password there. Um, make sure you've got a space for the next bit there. And host name, hcpexample.com. In my case, I've got HCP idea spot XYZ. So those three things, email, password, and host name, we're gonna set that up. So copy that. Once you've got that set up to your own settings, and back in Putty, we right click paste that in and press enter to run this install script. So this does take a little while. So it's gonna be checking for any missing dependencies and it'll start installing Hestia and all the other required software to run this thing. All right, so you'll get a message here saying it's gonna take 10 to 15 minutes to complete, which is usually pretty accurate. I mean, we'll come back and check this out when it's done. What we can actually do in the meantime, back on our um, dashboard, we can head over to our virtual cloud network here and set up the ports that we need for Hestia. So click on that one there. And then we go to our subnet here and the default security list. So this is our ingress rules. So by default, you should have 22. I've got a couple of extras here that I used on a previous tutorial, but um, this looks all good for now. We're gonna add some more. So click add here. And over on that blog post, I've actually got on my blog post, the list of the ports we're gonna need. So this is the list here. Um, copy those. If you're using Cloudflare, there's a few extra steps there. So make sure you follow that if you're using Cloudflare. But for the rest of us, we use the default list there. Uh, we're going to paste those in there like that. Source CIDR is 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 and TCP there. We can put in a description there. I'll call mine how Hestia for this. Add the ingress rules. And this should add our ports in there with that description there. So that looks all cool. Let's check how our installer is going in putty. So this is still ticking away. Let's um, come back when this is done. 
All right, so this looks like it's finished up here. It says you must restart the system before continuing. Um, the one thing, if we scroll up a little bit here, um, you can actually get the admin URL. You might want to copy these. So you've got your URL and password. Actually highlighting these things in Putty automatically copies them to your clipboard. So you can go ahead back to Notepad, for example, and just paste those in. Um, so you've got those handy, but you can work this out anyway if you've kept your password and you should know your IP address. So this, this isn't too bad if you lose this but I'm just gonna show you how to do that anyway. Anyway, scroll down here, we can restart the system by typing reboot and enter, and it'll say that, and we just have to wait about a minute and this will reboot, but we're not gonna really need to go back in here, so I can actually close this off, and we should be able to use everything from the browser from this point. All right, so there's a couple of ways we can get into our control panel now. The first way is just through your IP address, HTTP on port 8083. If you copy that, you can actually get to your dashboard, you'll get an HTTP warning because HTTP is not set up on the IP address, but you can, you can go through advanced and proceed there. The other way you can get to, in my case, I set up HCP, Ideaspot XYZ. So if you go to HCP, Ideaspot XYZ or whatever domain you've chosen for your control panel there, when we did the install on port 8083, um, you can get to your login screen like that. So hopefully this one's working and uh, you've actually got SSL already set up on that when we did the install. So uh, we, can inst uh, we can log in here with admin and next, and we use the password that we used when we set this up. So that'll be the same as our install password that we used when we ran the install script. So we can log in like that and that will get us into our admin panel. I can actually save this in here um, to my Google Chrome here. So this looks all good. Now, the first thing we wanna do, rather than running everything as admin, we set up a regular user here. So uh, we wanna set up a new administrator. I'm gonna be called Alex, uh, Alex email here, ideaspot uh, class, gmail.com. Uh, nice strong password in here. And that looks all good. Let's go ahead and save that in. Awesome. Great, now we can actually log in as Alex and we can start adding domains to our server now. So I'm gonna add one here, we click that one and let's start with our next cloud server. So I'm gonna call this one cloud um, dot idea spot XYZ in this case. Go ahead and save that in. That'll create a web domain called cloud. That looks all good. We can go back here and we should be able to see that we've got cloud is set up. You can click the pencil here, we can set up SSL. Let's go ahead and do that. So enable SSL there. And we're gonna use Let's Encrypt to obtain SSL certificate. That looks all good. And advanced options. I don't think we need to change anything else there. That looks all fine. We can actually click save there. Now this does take a second because it's gonna issue that Let's Encrypt certificate. So just be patient here. Um, that'll, that'll be ticking away. So that's all good, we've got the tick there. We can go back to web and hopefully we should see the tick for SSL green there. So that looks all good. Um, we can go back into our um, web domain there. We can actually quick install the apps here. So here's all the popular web apps you can install on our control panel. Uh, for this one, we wanted to install Nextcloud on that cloud subdomain here. So click setup there and we can set up an username and a password here. All right, so I'm gonna call mine Alex. Nice strong password, click install, and then just wait for Nextcloud to install. I don't think this takes particularly long, so again, just wait for this to install. Perfect, so we've got a green tick there. Nextcloud was installed successfully. We could head over to cloud, um, idea spot, XYZ there. We should be able to hit our Nextcloud login screen here. There we go. So I actually had to set that up as Alex and our password, we can log in. So that'll bring us to our welcome screen here. You can scroll through here. It gives you a little bit of a, an onboarding experience here. You can actually get apps. You can get a desktop app for Windows, Mac, Linux, um, mobile apps as well. So you can access your next cloud through all your different devices there. Um, you can sync up your contacts and your calendar and all that kind of good stuff. Anyway, um, start using Nextcloud. So here we are, we can go to our files and we can uh, store files on our cloud drive uh, like this. Um, it's all pretty, this is all very user friendly, honestly. But anyway, a great way of storing documents, movies, uh, music, all that kind of good stuff and sharing it with your friends or coworkers or whatever. Um, this is, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on using Nextcloud, but that is all set up and working just fine over on that cloud um, subdomain there. We can head back to our Hestia panel here. We can go back to web. Let's actually set up uh, like a website on the main domain. So on Ideaspot XYZ, let's set up a WordPress install on that one. So um, Ideaspot XYZ, we're gonna go ahead and save that in there. 
that'll create a new web domain on that root there, idea.spot.xyz. Uh, we head back and we should get the idea.spot.xyz there. We can go to the pencil. And again, we set up the SSL, same method, enable the SSL, use Let's Encrypt there, and we can save that in. Again, just wait, because it does take a little bit of time to get that Let's Encrypt certificate on here. And that looks all good now. So if I go to idea.spot.xyz, um, what do we get? We should get a uh, holding page here, construction page. Um, idea.spot.xyz is working. We've got the SSL working. So this looks all, all good. We can actually install apps on that um, root domain now as well. So um, lots of different options here. I'm going to put WordPress on. Um, I know a lot of you love WordPress who follow my channel here. So again, we'll just fill that out. Site name, username, email, and password. So fill those top uh, boxes out. So there we go. Click install and WordPress should install now here. That really only took a few seconds. So we can head over here and we should see, if we reload this, we should get a WordPress default install there. We can actually go to uh, admin panel, um, wp-admin there. And we can get in with the credentials that we just set up. So idea spot and whoop, I'll put my password in here and log in. Should be all good. There we go. Uh, Awesome. So we can go ahead and start using WordPress, set up a website on that main domain, use our next cloud on our cloud domain. So everything should be pretty uh, self-explanatory from this point. There is one little setting I might tweak here. So um, I'm logged in as Alex. I might actually log out, log back in as admin. Um, Cause I'll show you how to adjust the server settings in here. Uh, let's log out and log back in as admin. There we go. So once we're logged in as admin, you can get the gear icon here. What I want to do is increase the PHP settings for WordPress. So um, usually you want to um, have a bit more resources for WordPress. So click configure there and we should have web server there. And we want to click that pencil there on the web server icon here, configure PHP. So WordPress um, usually enjoys having a bit more resources here. The upload max file size is way too small by default. So you can bump that up as as high as you want really. So I might make it 2000 megabytes. You might want to import a big um, former website, um, import it into WordPress and um, do something like that, for example. So make that as big as you need it. Memory limit, we can double that to 256. Again, you might want to increase these execution and input times, chuck another zero on there and save that in. So um, that should be all good. But um, I think those limits are a little bit small by default. Uh, post max size, again, I might make that bigger as well. Anyway, so just set those up as you need. I think those defaults were a bit small, but um, I think from, from here we should be able to go, be good to go in terms of running WordPress and running the next cloud. So um, hopefully all this has been useful. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.